Please, sir, uh, madam, um, allow me two remarks at the beginning. Uh, the first remark is I want to express I am very glad to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation, Karen. That's a great one for me. Uh, the second remark, please uh, excuse my English. It's not so perfect. Uh, the other uh, native speakers oh, can uh, please allow it. Uh, excuse it. Um, I hope that you pay more attention for the content. So, um, my task here is a comparison between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany in a short time. That's a great challenge for me. Uh, I want to begin with a little model uh, so we can uh, have a look at the whole field. I think we have to distinguish three parts. The part of the transmitters, of the producers, the sensors at first. And then, second, secondly, the messages, the contents, and uh, certainly the receivers, the recipients. What do the people with this information First, before reading Carol's book, I saw um, Nazi. Germany uh, had a very strictly <coughs> regimented propaganda, which uh, was very centralized. But now I know uh, it was nothing in comparison to uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, it's a great difference between uh, the two regimes. Um, in Germany, we have no Censorship in a hard direction. We have only instruction. Uh, there was only uh, instruction what to write, and then the people could write, and we had a control of uh, the writing, not a control before printing, only afterwards. I think it's a great difference uh, to the Russian system. Secondly, um, in the Soviet Union there was a big brother, Stalin, <coughs> and the position of Hitler was quite different. Uh, he was the big brother only in some aspects. Uh, he had uh, some special fields uh, which he controlled uh, totally. One field in the war was the newsreel, and another field uh, was um, uh, the army report, the Wehrmachtsbericht, uh, was controlled by the uh, little total. In the other fields, uh, he has his um, uh, helpers, uh, mainly girls. But Goebbels was not um, a second Hitler. He had to share his power with a lot of people. Uh, this is uh, forgotten uh, because his propaganda said, uh, I am the mighty man for propaganda. But in reality, there are some other people who are important to impress. Uh, especially, uh, he has to uh, had to uh, share with uh, Max Amann and uh, Otto Dietrich. They control the press too. Only in broadcasting, uh, Goebbels uh, had a position uh, as the most powerful man. Yeah, and this difference has the result that. Uh, the fields of press and broadcasting are quite different. In Germany, in war Germany, uh, we have a kind of radio like today private radio in some aspects. We have a lot of music and we have a lot of entertaining music. Good mood 
was the most important thing uh, in war. So was the argument of Goebbels, that his idea. We have nearly 70 until, until 80 percent of light music in broadcast, and only 20 to 30 percent work program, which was strictly controlled. I think that's a great difference, so I understand Carol's uh, book to disagree with it. There was only a small part, six, seven hours from 20. Uh, in the field of the press, the situation was more similar to the situation in uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, there uh, are, uh, was a lot of uh, propaganda, uh, a lot of paralyzation of their own people, of their own soldiers, and demonization of uh, the others. It was very similar. Now to thirdly to the receivers, to the recipients. We have to distinguish between the circumstances and the using in detail. The <coughs> circumstances in the Soviet Union uh, were really bad, I mean disastrous. Um, we had only a low diffusion um, of the media. We have a small circulation of figures of press, relatively small. I think uh, when I compare um, the figures, only a third of the German in press. And uh, in radio, uh, it's the spread was. Uh, uh, Okay, excuse me. Uh, very uh, disastrous. We have only a few um, radio sets, and the most were uh, wire fed. It was kind of like um, if they had only loudspeakers, they had a, a wire from the transmitter to the loudspeaker, and they uh, can only, uh, could only choose between. I want to hear or I want not to hear. In Germany, we have we had this wire fed transmission. We uh, had wireless transmission, so, like today, and so that they couldn't control the hearing of the people. So perfect. They tried it, but it wasn't uh, possible. <coughs> So, at the end, uh, a little outlook and some conclusions. We have in Germany a lot of research about the question of using. And uh, we have, I think, a quite good um, source. We call it uh, surveillance reports of the um, uh, security service of the party, and this security service uh, re researched uh, the mood, the opinion of the people, and they looked for the results of the media, broadcasting of uh, the press, and they knew people in Germany were reading the newspapers and they were hearing the broadcasting, but they drew their own conclusions. They can't control the conclusions of the people. And it's, I think, a very important point. So we have to tone down uh, the importance of propaganda. <coughs> and I think I can confirm one of Carol's um, 
series uh, his claims uh, were uh, he writes Hitler offered no alternative to Stalin. Living uh, under the Germans was no alternative to living under Stalin. It was the worst uh, alternative. And the German uh, made a lot of mistakes. In reality, the German army made a, a lot of uh, mistakes. Uh, the crimes in the Soviet Union are more important than the propaganda of Stalin. So I would invite you at the end to a little consideration what would happen uh, if the Germans uh, treated the Russians and Ukrainians and so on as human beings and not as subhuman beings. And if they didn't uh, kill the Jews, what would be then? Then I think the Stalin propaganda 